Boys and girls, Alex here. I've had quite a number of good drills over the past. This being one of them, which is a Makita. I can't remember the actual model number. Other than the fact that I paid $830 for this about 14 years ago when I was still living in Richmond. The reason why it was so expensive is it's got four features on it, sort of a normal drill, impact, um, hammer and whatever the hell, screwing and it's also got two speeds. Any combination of the three functions they had, sorry, drilled in combinations of three different functions they cost around three to four hundred dollars. Throw in the fourth function and it went up to eight hundred dollars. Now, this was a good drill, well it was my best drill, and I've had quite a few others like Ryobi and even though I've had a standard Makita, Triton, they've all been good. However, I have just recently upgraded to the new pair to a new pair of Festool drills. Now it's unfortunately for me, it's like if you've been driving a VW all your life and suddenly you get behind the wheels of a Ferrari. That is what I say about these drills. Now look, both a VW and a Ferrari will get you to your destination, but one will get you there quicker, more comfortably, and you'll enjoy the experience more than the other. And I'm pretty sure not too many people would pick the VW. All right, this particular drill is really just a stock standard impact drill. Nothing really startling, although it has got this feature where you can adjust. That's just, I think, a straight impact. And then you can adjust the torque. There's three settings, low, medium, high. Um, it's got Bluetooth uh, batteries, which is great. And it's got your stock standard um, fitting there, which... In a way, I was a bit disappointed that that's it, because really, this only takes those stock standard bits. It won't blow, it will take a Festool um, Technic, to, uh, what do they call it, Centronic bit. Or will it? I don't know, let's see. No, look, I'm not going to suffer it. Look, I'm not here to actually review the drill. I'm also here to review a function of this drill and that function is brought about by this particular head. I quickly ducked off to get a um, countersink bit and while I did that I actually got a Centrotech to a normal bit adapter that I could have taken it out of one of these drills and yes it does not fit that so it only takes a stock standard bit that look to me that's a bit of a disappointment but not to worry I didn't oops oh hang on maybe it will take it one of the things I had a lot of trouble with coming to grips with these fest tool bits and I'll show you later is that in there, that's a hex bit, and if you hex shape, and if you don't get things right, it doesn't actually register. But anyway, that's my problem. Um, well, it'll be your problem if you had one too, but we'll worry about that later. Now, as I said, the thing I do like about these, you can get all different types of heads for these. Uh, or heads or chucks, as you might call them, for the thing. This is a stock standard, well, when I say stock standard, it's your standard um, chuck. And I'm doing this bloody, there, there you are, there's one of those Centra, tool, Centra Tech. And you'll notice just the difference between that. That's a stock, stock standard bit. The Centra Tech has this long shank. Right, anyway, um, 
As I say, I don't want to do a review on this. Oops. Ah! There you have it. Um, actually, stop it! I forgot, I paired the Bluetooth battery with my shop vac, just to demonstrate that um, when you turn a power tool on with a Bluetooth battery that's been paired, it turns the shop vac on. Not that you'd often want to use the, um, the shop vac when you're drilling, unless you're making a lot of mess. Um, and to actually unpair it, you either recharge the battery or you physically got to turn the power off. I've got a remote power point. Turn it off and then turn it back on again and that'll hopefully... No, it didn't. Come on. No. Press the wrong button. I pressed the blue instead of the green. That should now have... Turned it off, unpaired it, yeah. Okay. God, why? I should rehearse these bloody things. I stuff it up, but it should make you guys feel better. Okay, to remove the chuck, you pull on this and pull it out. And this is where I usually get stuck because there is a hex shank in there or a hex spindle that has to line up. And sometimes when I try and put it together, it just doesn't go in. I've got to twist it until it engages. Anyway, this is another one of the shanks which I reckon is just brilliant. Pull that. Once you've lined it up, no, hang on, get it lined up, that's it. Oh. Come on. That's, oh, that's right, you've got to tighten this up. But once you've done that, it's sort of gear driven. You can turn this in all different ways and it's got a very very smooth action but yeah actually you've got to tie that on another thing that's good about this you can turn this into a centro this is normally just a spindle there but you can turn it into a centro tech acceptable here we go again I don't think I've got it yeah centro tech acceptable thing because you'll notice it will not prove me wrong won't accept the normal bit however it will accept the centro tech and then that will take that I mean it extends it just that much more but it just gives you that bit of versatility but anyway again we're not here to carry on about this we're here to demonstrate this thing here what this actually does it's really a depth stop for a screw now a lot of you say oh ho hum big bloody deal well to those same people that say ho hum big bloody deal do you use a countersink with a depth stop if you don't well then yeah ho hum big bloody deal but if you do use a countersink with a depth stop, um, why if you don't worry about how far your screw is going to go in the timber? Now, what I've done is I've actually loosened up this, well, this thing, turning it anti-clockwise, which makes the head rise up or stick more proud from it. And then as you want to hone in on it, you tighten this up. So, let's see what we've got here. Put this in. See, the way this works is once this is spring-loaded and you've got to push on the spring, but once that bottoms out, it engages some mechanism whereby the, sp uh, the driving mechanism inside the chuck stops rotating. So you don't find this uh, bit spinning around in the head there it actually just stopped spinning and you should be able to hear a click that does it now there, there's the click and it's about look uh, probably about half a mil 
above. Now each twist is supposed to raise it I think 0.1 of a mil so I'll try well four three one two three now before I go any further this is really compared to if you were trying to do it freehand even if you countersunk it the chances of getting two screws in to the same depth and I'll do it with this there you are um, you've got it but the chances of repeating that exactly is minimal so you could stuff around like that until you get the right depth okay now we'll remove this because you can't remove it with that drill because of the uh, the way mechanism is done you can't actually push this down far enough to get the tip of the bit in there so you've got to remove it with another drill and then put it in look I'll use the same hole come on that to me oh, look two more It'd be nice if you could lock that bit into the into the chuck, uh, the drill bit. But it because the screws I use are really tight tolerances, and I love that because you can then balance it on there, get up and do your screwing. Uh, but sometimes, unless if it's held in by a magnet rather than physically. When you try and remove the screw from the bit, the whole bit bloody comes out, which is what's been happening here. Alright, let's try again. There you are. To me, that's about as flush as I'd like to have it. Um, it's... Oh, look, at the end of the day, that, that side there oops that side there is a little bit higher than there but that's because I probably didn't have it perfectly vertical but oh you know look I could set it down another few mil but the whole proof in the pudding should be with this one this should go down exactly the same depth am I correct yeah that's good enough and yeah there you have it. They are virtually exactly the same depth without stuffing around, adjusting tensions and all that. And I could probably get another thousand, well, the battery wouldn't last that long, but at least another thousand screws and put them in at exactly the same depth. Now look, it might be something that turns everybody on. I think if you're doing precision work where you're using exposed screws, and I do, well, I won't say I do all the time. I have done it quite a few times with brass screws. Naturally, with brass screws, I'd probably pre-drill pre with a metal screw, but then seize them finally with a brass screw. Or even if I don't use a brass screw, at least I can get them exactly the same depth. Now, one other thing this unit has is you can remove this head take out your square drive or Phillips or whatever type of drive you want and you can put in this this unit hang on just bear with me for 30 seconds Here I am 30 seconds later hope you haven't been waiting long now I could I couldn't figure out and the instructions and the manuals are fuck all useless really you'd think that Festool for what you pay for would give bloody good manuals and instructions. They don't. They're a bucket of shit. In fact, whenever I review something about Festool, the first thing I say is, your manual sucks. Anyway, they had this square hex drive, and I thought, what the hell was it for? It's one of these roofing screws. Fits in there. 
and you use this unit only because it's a bigger diameter and actually you can see the just the difference between the two bits that's a bigger head that's why that is naturally a bigger diameter than that and look I'm not going to try it because I tried playing around with it um, I went through and stuffed around a bit eventually got it right and I'm not going to really try and go through that exercise I never use these but the point I'm getting at is you can then adjust these for the setting now whether you use these with countersinks but as I said the countersink even if you countersink it the countersink will not um, govern the depth of your screw it'll ease the movement and it'll stop tear out or blow out or whatever you might call it but it doesn't stop your screw unless naturally you're just using a manual screwdriver but then you wouldn't be using one of these and if you don't use one of these you don't need one of these so it's as simple as that you know um, and yes it's nice to uh, countersink to get it neat clean up everything however because you can see tear out there like let's just see you know I don't know how well this will work let's try it jeez you know we're only here for it leaves a nice little hole however how will that affect well naturally if the hole's too big it's not going to be much good for So, as I say, if the countersink is too deep, it's not going to, well, if it is too deep, um, what's going to happen is you'll see a gap around the um, screw, and if it's not deep enough, that's not a problem, because this will then guide it down that little bit extra. which is exactly what I thought would happen. It stopped, it's flush, but I can see this rim around it. Um, anyway, uh, there you have it. But the beauty of it is, as I said, if I use this, you can see straight away just, just by that. It's so, so far down that it's no, you know, anyway. Uh, I don't know whether I've convinced you. I, I don't really want to convince you. I'm not here to sell or spruce. It's more a case of if you happen to have Festool and you have the need for this, be aware that this particular chuck is available if you need it and how it works, etc. All right, that's it. I've made enough bloody mess of this video I uh, don't think Festool are going to hire me as a demonstrator so Uru and keep safe